Hi, welcome back to the Peterson Automotive Museum YouTube channel. I'm Johnny Eisen, Associate Curator here at the museum. And today we're up on the second floor in our alternating currents exhibit, where we look at the history of electric cars. This exhibit is sponsored by Optima Batteries and BMW of North America. And right now the exhibit has a uh, particular focus on mid 20th century electric vehicles, especially those from the gas crises of the 1970s. So right now I'm surrounded by three interesting electric cars from the mid 1970s. Today we're going to focus on this funny looking guy right behind me. Uh, but first let's look at the other two. Here we have the Microdot. This was a concept car we've talked about before. And over here we have the Zagato Zele. Now these two cars are by very famous car designers, William Towns over here and Zagato over here. One British, one Italian. And we see that the uh, William Towns car is very much about form and style. And of course, the Zagato here is pretty much just about, well, whatever they could put together to get two people in an electric vehicle. Behind me is the 1975 Sebring Vanguard City Car, which looks kind of like an orange cheese wedge on wheels. So in the early 1970s, there was a fuel shortage here in the United States due to an embargo by OPEC, which was the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. This was a group of mostly uh, Middle Eastern countries, plus Venezuela, who, for political reasons, decided not to send very much gasoline here to America. Now that got people starting to think about fuel economy. Fuel economy was a lesser concern for most of automobile history due to the price of gasoline being relatively cheap. Uh, people's main concerns when buying a car were comfort, style, and performance. Uh, economy was really only thought of with the uh, purchase price of a car. But in the 1970s, gas prices shot up and people started to think about miles per gallon. And this caused a lot of smaller companies to start offering alternatives to gasoline powered cars. And behind me is one of those cars, the city car, which is a battery electric vehicle. In the very early days of automobile history, there were as many electric powered cars as there were gasoline powered ones. And actually electricity was thought of as maybe the answer to what should power a car. But in the early 20th century, gasoline took over mostly because it was much more convenient. People had the same concerns about electric cars as we do today. Uh, the convenience of charging them, charging time, as well as range anxiety. And electric cars kind of uh, faded out by the mid 20th century, and it wasn't until the last few decades of that century uh, that they started to make a comeback. So when electric cars did make a comeback in the 1970s, uh, they were a lot like this guy. They were small, uh, light, and kind of funny looking, uh, mostly because the lead acid batteries were very heavy and to get a greater range, you wanted to have a smaller car. So a lot of these cars really were not meant for long distances. They were meant as uh, city cars or neighborhood vehicles. The Vanguard city car that we see here obviously is a uh, function over form. It has a plastic body, it has uh, six uh, lead acid batteries, and uh, it can go about as far as a golf cart can. And as a matter of fact, it is pretty much a golf cart with a funny looking uh, cheese wedge shaped plastic body on it. So this car, despite its uh, oddball looks, actually holds a distinctive place in American automobile history. This was the most produced American electric car uh, up until the uh, Nissan Leaf started to be built in Tennessee and then of course the Tesla. Almost 5,000 of these cars were built, first from 74 to 77 as the city car, and then it was rebooted in 1980 as the commuter car. The 1980 version you may have seen pictures of had these gigantic five mile per hour uh, diving board bumpers on it and is even more bizarre looking than this little guy. So obviously this car was meant to be about as basic as basic transportation can get. You got 40 miles of range, so you're not going to be in it very long. Uh, the seats are just comfortable enough. I think after about 40 miles, uh, you would be ready to get out. You have almost no amenities in the car. You've got no air conditioning, no heating. You have an AM radio. You have a uh, switch for the wipers and you have a defrost. And that's uh, pretty much it. But you know, it's really uh, not a horrible place to be. Again, if you're only driving to the uh, train station or if you have a short commute to work. Uh, I have actually driven one. I had a friend who had one of these cars and it does indeed drive very much like a golf cart. 
if uh, your golf cart was attached to maybe a porta potty. Instead of windows, you get these uh, plastic uh, side panels that uh, lift out. This car was designed and manufactured in Sebring, Florida, and really feels like a car that you would uh, want to drive in a warmer climate. So you have a little room in here for a couple bags of groceries. Uh, as you can see here, uh, because it's a very uh, thin plastic body, they did give it something of a roll cage uh, for uh, safety purposes. I don't know if I'd wanna be in a very high impact accident, but I think it would sort of uh, hold up for uh, low speed collisions. And since it doesn't go very fast, hopefully that's all you would have in here. This particular city car is actually in very remarkable condition. Uh, these plastic bodies didn't really hold up over long periods of time. And a lot of time when you find these, they uh, have serious cracks in the body and they weren't really very well taken care of back in the day. So they would kind of fall into a decrepit state. This car obviously was used. Uh, it's got a parking sticker from 1979, 80 on there. Uh, and uh, clearly whoever had it loved it and took care of it. I have a particular affection for these cars. Uh, like I said, a friend of mine owned one uh, and we used to have a good time uh, driving around the neighborhood in it. Uh, it is uh, obviously an example of wedge design, which was quite popular from the 60s through the 80s. Uh, it was a very simple design, obviously, but an efficient way to get us two people in a small car with a small cargo area. Uh, so despite its very basic shape, this car was actually designed by a designer named John Muir. Uh, it was an evolution of the club car golf cart. At the time, in the mid-1970s, when these cars were being produced at their peak, Sebring Vanguard was actually the sixth largest manufacturer of automobiles in the United States. So right underneath, uh, placed just ahead of the rear axle is the two and a half horsepower electric motor. Uh, unlike a golf cart, you do get something of a suspension. You've got a uh, simple leaf springs back here and the uh, 480 by 12 tires are uh, much larger than you get on a golf cart. So you have a little bit more comfort than a golf cart, even though the tires are incredibly skinny. Uh, it also has a small differential, which makes it much more like a car than a golf cart. Uh, and here we see some original uh, Michigan license plates from 1973, which is uh, pretty cool. So that's our brief look at the Sebring Vanguard City Car. Great example of electric cars from the mid 1970s. We sure have come a long way in 50 years, haven't we? I'm Johnny Eisen. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our videos. And when you're in Los Angeles, come visit us here at the Peterson Automotive Museum.